Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. What do you get for your money when you rent a Battlefield server on PC? And what do you get when you rent one for the console version of the game? What are the differences between the two? What are they doing well and what can be improved? This is what we will take a look at in this video. So if you decide to get a server for the PC version of Battlefield 4, then you have quite a good amount of providers that you can choose from. And most of them offer you servers in multiple countries and cities. This means that in many regions you can find a server that is hosted quite close to where you live. Now before I show you the process of renting a server, I want to make clear that I am not sponsored by i3D. The reason why I choose this hoster is because I already used their services in the past and they offered the cheapest server that I could find. And money is a factor here because I only rent this server to be able to make this video. Ok, so when we order a server from one of the game server providers, then we usually have a quite long list of games that we can choose from. In our case we want to get the Battlefield 4 server. Now we can choose between public and private, where private simply means that this server will always run with the password. A private server is useful when you use it for filming cinematics or machinimas and clans also use it to practice. In the next drop down menu we could select the player count, but we will do that in the next step. So, as you can see, the more players I want to allow on my server, the more it will cost me, because it needs more resources and that means that the server provider either has to use more powerful hardware or they can only run fewer server instances on one physical box. What you have to consider here is that the commanders and the spectators also count. So, if you want to have 32 players plus 2 commanders plus 2 spectators, then you need 36 server slots. Then we can select the location or data center where the server will be hosted. Here you want to select the location that is close to where you live because that will result in a lower latency for you when you play on that server. The branding option helps you to reduce the server costs a bit. When you select the branded option then the server name must always include the name of your provider, in this case i3D. If you pay extra then you can have an unbranded server and then you can remove the name of the provider from your server name. Then we can select the Procon layer as an option. Procon is a very popular admin tool for Battlefield that gives you full control over your server and also supports plugins. Now, if you have multiple admins for your server or if you want to have Procon and its plugins to manage your server at all times, then you need to have one instance of Procon running 24-7. If you don't want that, then you can choose this Procon layer here as an option, which means that i3D will basically run their own instance of Procon, which is in control of the server. So if you or any of your admins wants to change something on the server, then you simply start Procon locally and connect to the Procon layer. And the Procon layer will then forward your command to the actual server. I will add this option here so that I can show you how that works. You can also order a voice over IP server as an option in case that you need one. And lastly you can select for how long you want to pay and use this server. I will select one month and the option that it won't get renewed because as I said, I only get the server here to do this video for you. So once you placed your order and paid for the server, you have to wait for the setup of the server to finish. I got the notification that both the server and the Procon layer were up and running about 15 minutes after I paid for it. Now to configure your game server, the providers always offer some kind of configuration menu where you can enable and disable quite a few options. The server can then run in four different types, which are official, ranked, unranked and private. Each of these types defines which options in the server you are allowed to change. And if you choose the official type, then you have the least control over your server. You are then not even allowed to kick or ban players. Besides these global server options that you can set here, you can also define admins, which will then be able to use the in-game admin commands. You can also select which maps and game modes you want to have in your rotation. You can see who got banned and you can reserve slots for VIPs. If you don't want to use this config editor, then you can also enter all the variables directly. So that's the basic setup of the server. Now how about Procon? This here is the Procon layer for our server, which is in control of my game server. So if I want to use my local installation of Procon to do any changes to my game server, then I need to connect to that Procon layer. Inside of Procon we then have a lot of additional options that are not exposed in the config editor from i3D. This allows us to further tweak the configuration of our server. Here we can also directly move, kick and ban players, as well as restart the current map, load the next map, change the map rotation and a lot more. I can even select the factions that are playing on the map, so that I can have the US fight against the US, or the Russians versus the Russians. 
But one of the most exciting features of Procon is its plugin support, like this latency manager here that I have installed in the Procon layer on the server. This plugin allows me to kick players who are not located inside a country or countries that I can enter here. That can be useful when I want to have a server for players who speak a certain language. Then I can enable a ping kicker where I enter the maximum ping that I allow on my server, so that I can ensure that no high ping players ruin the experience of my community. But I'm just scratching the surface here, there are a ton of plugins out there from auto balancers to weapon rules and a lot more. That said, there are a few admins out there who go a bit too crazy with these plugins and that can then also become disruptive for the gameplay, especially those poorly configured auto balancers. So this Procon application is really great to manage your server or servers, but what if you are not near your PC? No problem, just use the Procon mobile app, where you then have pretty much the same control over your server as if you would use the standalone software on your PC. So if you rent the server for the PC version of Battlefield, then you do get quite a lot for your money. You can select between quite a lot of different server providers. You can choose between different countries and cities for the server location. You can highly customize your server using the config editor from the server provider and tools like Procon give you even more control and freedom to provide your community with the experience that they want. But it's not perfect. While we have quite a lot of game server providers and server locations for Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline, we have still less than we had for Battlefield 3. The reason for this is that EA did not contract as many game server providers for Battlefield 4 as they did for Battlefield 3, because they could not fulfill their quality standards. So while that was basically a good idea, the side effect of this decision was that EA actively created a lot of new out of region players. Because EA sells their games in a lot of countries that have no servers at all inside their country or in the countries near them. The situation is really bad in the Middle East, India, Africa as well as in South America. The best servers that many players can find there have a ping of 150 milliseconds or more and that's simply way too much for a first person shooter. So in the future EA has to work harder to ensure that there are servers with decent pings for all the players and countries that they sell their multiplayer games in. Then there are the official presets and the matchmaking. Again, I do get why DICE introduced the official preset, because some admins are just bad at their job and so they tried to get a server type where players don't have to fear that they get banned by the admin because they killed him two times. Then there are a few options that should be inbuilt into the server, like the region lock and the high ping kicker. And these server options have to be exposed to the server browser. This means that if a server does not allow people from outside of Italy to join, then the server browser should not show me that server when I am not located in Italy. The same goes for the high ping kicker. If a server kicks players with more than 100 milliseconds, then the server browser must not show me that server if my ping to that server is higher than that value. These functions can only work well when they are properly integrated into the server and the server browser. If they get realized through Procon plugins, then you end up in a situation where you get kicked from a server right after you joined. And that's not a nice experience. Another useful feature would be to get the ability for the server admin to disable certain weapons and gadgets inside the server's configuration. We actually already had this in Battlefield 3 when you used the matches feature inside of Battlelog, which would then create a match on your Battlefield 3 server with a custom set of weapons. Sadly this feature was not carried over to Battlefield 3. And while we are inside Battlelog, it would be great to be able to rent the server directly from inside of Battlelog, if I need one for just a few matches or to record a cinematic. Both the PC players and admins would highly benefit from these changes. Now let's have a look at the console servers, but for me to be able to have a look at them I first had to buy the game, because I usually play shooters on the PC only. Unless it's Halo, because Microsoft hates PC gaming. So I had the choice to either buy it for my Xbox One or the 360. But since money is an issue here and the server options are pretty much the same for both console generations, I decided to buy it for the 360. So don't be surprised when you see that my soldier has a very low rank. Now the process of renting a server is really comfortable, because you can do that from the in-game menu. Then we can select for how long we need the server. And what is quite nice here is that if we need one for just one match, then you can get one for one day. That would also be nice to have on the PC. In the next step we can then select where we want the server to be hosted. And the options here are shockingly limited. 
I can only choose between West Coast, East Coast, Europe, Asia and Australia. I cannot select specific countries nor cities as I can on the PC. Based on what I see here, it looks like there is just one location where the servers are hosted inside each of those regions and that's really not good enough. Also I don't see my actual ping to these regions. I only see that signal strength icon which shows me 4 bars to East and West Coast servers and knowing how the signal strength indicator works on my phone, I would think that this is a pretty good connection, so I might just select the East Coast because why not? But that would be a big mistake because my actual ping to end server on the East Coast is around 110 milliseconds and to the West Coast it's about 190 milliseconds. That's way too much for a first person shooter yet it shows me 4 or 5 bars for the connection. It's even worse for servers in Asia where it shows me 3 bars where when I apply what I know from my phone I would assume that this is a good connection so I can play on that server just fine. Yet I actually have a ping of 280 milliseconds to servers in Asia. And that's really not good at all. Now after I made some tests it looks like 99 milliseconds or less will give you 5 bars. 100 to 199 milliseconds gives you 4 bars. 200 to 299 gives you 3 bars. 300 to 399 gives you 2 bars and more than 400 milliseconds gives you 1 bar. This should quite clearly show that a signal strength icon is not able to correctly represent the latency between you and the server. This nonsense then even continues inside of the server browser, where the server that is on top of this list here is located on the east coast and the connection shows me 4 or 5 bars. So based on that indicator and because this server is on top of the list, I would join that server. But if it would show me my actual ping value instead of that icon, then I would know that I have a ping of 110 milliseconds to that server and then I would never ever join it because I would know that this server is not inside my own region. But that signal strength icon will trick me into thinking that I have a good connection to this server and that's why I will join it. So why don't they just display the actual ping value in milliseconds? Part of the reason is that there are in fact people who think that more is better, which means that a higher ping value is better than a lower one, simply because they do not understand how the technology works. Yet the signal strength icon does not work either as it causes that players join servers that they should not join because the latency is just too high. I'm pretty sure that besides the general lack of server locations on all platforms, this is one of the primary reasons why console players complain more about the issue of hyping and out of region players flooding their servers than PC players do. These people simply do not know that they will lag on the server because the server browser showed them a signal strength of 4 or 3 bars and they know from their phone that this is perfectly fine. This icon is confusing and misleading. It has to be changed and in addition to that players also need to be able to see their actual ping value to the server as well as the ping of all players on the scoreboard just like on the PC version of the Battlefield games. Now in the next step it already asks me to pay for the server. I am not able to select how many players I want on my server. This means that if I want to just have a 16 player server for 8v8 matches then I cannot do that and I can also not reduce the costs of my server in the process as I can on PC. I can only order the full server with the full amount of slots or players, no matter how many I actually need and that's not very nice. So once I paid the server becomes available almost instantly and after the initial setup where I can enter the server name and choose the preset as well as a map rotation it will show up inside the menu. When I now select my server here then I can review and change its current setup. Now what you will notice here is that in the normal as well as in the newbie preset we are not allowed to change much. If we want to change the amount of uh, players that we allow on the server then we have to choose the hardcore infantry or the classic preset. The custom preset that we have on the PC does not exist at all. Then we also have the ability to add admins as well as VIP players. We are also able to ban and kick players from inside of this menu, but that's pretty much everything that we can do here. If you want to access the server settings while you are playing on the server then you can do that from the in-game menu. Here you can then select the next map, move, ban and kick players. So the admin options that the game provides here are also very limited and that's why I'm really not surprised that players are unhappy with what they get for their money when they rent the server on the console. A very easy way to give the console admin more control over his server would be to simply offer Procon support. This means that the admin could get the same kind of control over his console server that the admins of the PC servers have. 
and since there's a mobile app available for Procon, the admin of the console server does not need a PC to take use of Procon. And because the official preset does not allow the admin to kick or ban players, the Procon support and the ability to use plugins like the latency manager that I showed you before would not affect the official servers. But would Sony and Microsoft even allow that? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Both Microsoft and Sony are very protective when it comes to their console systems. You just need to have a look at the upcoming spring patch for Battlefield 4 where the ISO was only allowed by Microsoft to include the network performance overlay for the Xbox One. The PlayStation 4 owners will not get this inbuilt network performance analyzer, because Sony did not allow it. Both companies have a quite extensive set of rules that the developers need to follow if they want to release their game, DLCs and patches on their system. That's why there is the certification process, where not only the stability gets tested by Microsoft and Sony, but also if the developer followed all the rules. Microsoft calls them TCR, or Technical Certification Requirements. The TCR is not available for the public, but if you google for it, then you will get one result that shows a rather old version for the Xbox 360. But despite how old it is, TCR 9.7 is still very interesting because it tells the developer at which point they are allowed to disconnect a player from one of their game servers. One of these points here reads that as long as the latency of a player is not higher than 300 milliseconds, then you are not allowed to disconnect him from your server. So even if the developer does not want players with more than 100 milliseconds on the server, he is not allowed to kick players with more than 100 milliseconds because of this rule. The question is if that rule only applies to servers provided by the developer or also to servers which are owned by the player. Knowing Microsoft and Sony, I think it will apply to both. Yet a very interesting thing is that the Battlefield game servers do not disconnect players at all. You can have 700 milliseconds and a packet loss of 20% and the server will never kick you. I have no idea why DICE decided to do that. Now let's get to the conclusion of this video. Battlefield servers on the PC offer quite a lot to both the admins and the players, yet there are still quite a few aspects that can be improved. On the console however the situation is far from satisfying for both the admins and the players. The signal strength icon is confusing and misleading, which causes players to join hyping servers outside of their own region. Then there are not even remotely enough server locations. And the admins have very very limited control over their server. This is especially confusing when you consider that the console is where EA earns the most money with their games. So why are the servers and the server rental so bad there? You also have to consider that EA earns a good amount of money from these ranked servers, because since back in 2005 when DICE introduced the ranking system in Battlefield 2, the ranked server providers have to pay a fee to EA for every ranked server instance that the players buy. In Battlefield 4 this even changed to a fee per server slot as far as I know. So the more slots a server has, the more EA earns. So these ranked servers generate a quite steady income for EA. Yet they do nothing on the console to actually encourage players to rent a server there. When you look at what they provide then, you can get the feeling that they don't even want players to rent a server on the console. And it's not just the case in Battlefield 4. This has been the same in Battlefield 3 and it's also the case in Battlefield Hardline. And I fear that it will be the case in Star Wars Battlefront and all the other games that will follow in the future, unless the console players do something about that. Sadly the only way to get EA to change and to listen appears to be by keeping your wallets closed. Just look at that over 260 pages long out of region issues topic on Battlelog for Battlefield 4, as well as the other topics on Battlelog about the same issue in the previous games. Yet nothing changed. Nothing at all. Games like Battlefield require good servers, otherwise you won't have a good time when you play that game. This means that they must be stable and everyone that EA sold the game to must have access to servers with a decent ping. And by that I mean 100 milliseconds or less. Also the admin who decides to pay for a server must be given the right tools and options to manage their server. Otherwise they won't be willing to pay, which means that EA earns less money and that there are less servers available for the people to play on. But it's not just EA who has to be willing to go the extra mile. Also Microsoft and Sony need to give the developers more freedom. They cannot continue to block things like the network performance overlay, the community test environment and god knows what else they blocked in the past. I'm sure that quite a few things that we blame EA and DICE for was actually caused by Microsoft and Sony forcing the studio to do things that in the end only caused the consumers and the franchise to suffer. 
the current server situation is hurting everyone. And that has to change. If you enjoyed this video then give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.